Okay, so in this video, we're going to determine velocity and polar coordinates. Okay, so before we had um, a vector r is equal to x in the i hat plus y in the j hat. And so velocity is defined as the time change of our position. So that would be dx dt in the i hat direction plus dy dt in the j hat direction. Sometimes, by the way, people write that as like x dot i hat plus y dot. So dot means like derivative with respect to time in the j hat. Okay. So um, what if we want to do that in polar coordinates? So in polar coordinates, we have r is equal to r in the r hat direction. So we want to do dr dt. But we have to now apply the product rule. So the product rule states that we have to write dr dt in the r hat direction plus r, the, ma the value of r. Remember r, remember r in this r is like the vector r. This r is just the magnitude of r. This r hat is the unit vector in the r direction. Okay, so r, this is just a scalar quantity. So this is r times then dr hat dt. Okay. So um, okay. So let's like inspect these terms. So this is just going to be some number in the r hat direction. This is going to be a number times something in some other direction. Now, interestingly, uh, this looks like how fast is the object moving in the radial direction. So imagine, like, I have a, I have a, so I have an object that's at r, and like maybe it's moving. You know, an object can move like you know any way it wants. It could go whatever, do that. And, but at a given point in time, let me just undo that. Maybe, you know, at some point in, like at some moment in time, it's like maybe it's just moving outwards. Well, if a particle is just moving radially outwards, you know, you would, then you wouldn't expect any other term. So there would just be this, it would just be this term. This term tells you how much it's radially moving out. This term, what else could you do besides move radially out? Well, you could maybe move around. So this term might, be expressing how much it's moving around. Okay, so somehow this might relate to that. Well, let's see. So we have to prove that. Okay, so in order to do that, remember, let's go back to, let's pick a different color. Let's pick like a green. So let's go back to what r hat was from the previous section. So r hat is equal to i times cosine theta plus j hat times sine theta. So let's compute what dr dt is. So dr dt, so it, I'm, I've basically converted this polar um, unit vector into Cartesian unit vectors. So the u Cartesian unit vectors don't change in time. So we can just really write this as i times derivative of cosine of theta. So d dt of cosine of theta plus j hat times d dt of sine of theta, okay? So, do you remember the derivative of sine is cosine, and derivative of cosine is minus sine. So, um, this is going to be i hat times minus sine theta times d theta dt. So this is applying uh, the chain rule. Basically, we take the derivative of the function of the value theta. That gives us sine of theta, and then times d theta dt. Okay, this is going to be, so this next term is going to be j hat times cosine of theta times d theta dt. Okay, so coming up here, 
we obtain dr hat dt is equal to uh, uh, minus i hat sine theta plus j hat cosine theta all of that times theta dot. So remember theta dot is I've factored out let me actually pick another yet another color. So I've taken this term and this term and combined it into that term. So theta theta hat, just to be explicit, is equal to d theta dt. Okay. So what does this term look like? Do you remember when we were working back up here theta hat is minus sine theta i plus cosine theta. So dr dt is equal to, that's right, it's minus sine theta times i, yeah, okay. So that equals theta hat times theta dot. So notice now that we've shown that Velocity, which is equal to dr dt, is equal to r. I'm going to now use all this dot notation r times r dot times r hat plus r times uh, theta dot times theta hat. So this tells you that the velocity is going to be how quickly your object is moving radial outwards in the radial direction times r times how quickly it's rotating about the act the the the, the, the origin in the theta hat direction. So quite neat. Um, Wait a second, did I make a mistake here? No, it looks right. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, so that's, uh, so that's the final equation for the velocity in polar coordinates. Now this is going to be extremely powerful for some types of problems where we want to set them up. Um, uh, we, we'll actually want to favor using polar coordinates over traditional Cartesian coordinates. It makes things a lot easier sometimes. There's some types of problems that are just almost impossible to do. I mean, you can do them, but they're just very tedious and painful. So um, hope you uh, have enjoyed this, and um, please uh, go through and see the next sets of videos on on, uh, on how to work with uh, polar coordinates.